Hello, I'm Oliver Hilton, a barrister at Backlift Chambers. I appeared with my head of chambers, Keith Rowley QC, on behalf of the well-known pubs and restaurants company Mitchells and Butlers in the high-profile pensions rectification case decided in November by Mr Justice Trower. The claim concerned MMB's defined benefit uh, pension scheme and the power within it to change the rate at which pensions in payment and deferment are increased each year. The rules have provided that increases were calculated by reference to RPI or such other rate as decided by the principal employer. As principal employer, MMB wished to exercise that power by changing the rate by reference to CPI. The scheme's trustee took issue with that, successfully taking aim at the provenance of that power which had been introduced through amendments to the scheme rules in a previous iteration of the uh, trustee and rules back in 1996, by which the original power of the trustee to select the relevant prices index had also been removed. Following a three-week trial, the trustee obtained orders for rectification on the basis of the introduction of the employer power and the removal of the trustee power was a mistake, and declarations of invalidity on the basis that the introduction and removal was contrary to the proviso to the power of amendment to consult with the scheme actuary. Now, there were two interesting elements to the rectification case. First, on the basis of an original rectifiable mistake in 1996, there were two further consolidating events where new trustees and rules were effective which unknowingly replicated the 1996 mistake. Mr Justice Trower confirmed that serial rectification was available for all such deeds on the basis that the relevant intention on each consolidating event was merely to replicate substantive rights, whatever they were as a matter of law, or those rights as they then were understood rather than to adopt the language of the rules as they then stood. Second, MMB was not the original employer in 1996, but became principal employer after a corporate demerger and pursuant to a deed of substitution in 19, uh, 2003. The court found that MMB was not, given that it merely stood, stepped into the shoes of the previous employer, a bona fide purchaser for value without notice, who would otherwise take free of the equity of rectification. In any event, the introduction and removal of the relevant powers was invalid because there was not a proper consultation of the scheme's actuary, which under the terms of the trust deed was a precondition to the valid exercise of the power of amendment. The judge considered that on its true construction, consultation required that the modifications needed to be identified and explained in specific terms to the actuary. Here, the actuary had merely received copies of the proposed amendment um, amended deed and rules, without the changes in the power being highlighted, which was not sufficient. The exercise of the power was thus ineffective. I cannot do justice to the detailed analysis in the decision, and there are a few other issues which I have not touched on here, included in relation to section 67. If you have an hour to spare, I would recommend reading the judgment. Thank you.